This episode is an introduction to the Elisa Lam case, Hotel Cecil, and an analysis of the seemingly bizarre hotel elevator CCTV footage. Elisa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian student found dead in a water tank on top of a hotel in downtown LA near the notorious Skid Row. Her corpse was found naked and her clothes were also in the tank near her body. She was found by a hotel maintenance worker, Santiago Lopez, on the 19th of February 2013 after reports from guests of problems with the water and the water pressure. She was reported missing earlier in the month and had possibly been dead since the 31st of January 2013. Wikipedia states her disappearance had been widely reported, interest had increased five days prior to the body's discovery when the LAPD released video of the last time she was known to have been seen on the day of her disappearance by an elevator security camera. In the footage, Elisa is seen exiting and re-entering the elevator, talking and gesturing in the hallway outside and sometimes seeming to hide within the elevator, which itself appears to be malfunctioning. The video went viral on the internet, with many viewers reporting that they found it unsettling. Explanations range from claims of paranormal involvement to bipolar disorder, which Elisa suffered. It has also been argued that the video tape was altered prior to its release. The reason I've decided to start with this case is because I've been following it for a while and just like for many other people, for me, the evidence just doesn't make any sense, leading to many different theories and conspiracies regarding the circumstances surrounding her death. I'll hopefully follow this episode with further videos about evidence and hotel employee statements, as well as some of the theories and conspiracy theories going around the internet. I've gathered so much information from so many different people and sources. I'd like to try and present a full and impartial view of this case. It's also worth mentioning that although I'm not trying to make a conspiracy video, many people tend to shut down and lose interest when the word conspiracy is thrown out there. I should mention that the definition of conspiracy is a secret plan by more than one person to do something unlawful or harmful. So for example, a group of people who plan to commit a robbery will often be charged with conspiracy to commit robbery, at least in the UK anyway. So this isn't just a word used by the Tim Foyle hat wearing brigade. It's a word we have been led to believe is associated with nutters, but clearly, by definition, this isn't true. One such theory I would like to look at in more detail at a later date would be the TB conspiracy theory. A quick overview. There was an outbreak of TB in the Skid Row area of downtown LA at the same time Elisa was there. Okay, so what, you might ask? The test for TB, or a particular type of TB, is called the Lam elisa test. There's a lot of information about conspiracies on the internet uh, with regards to this test, so have a look, do some research, make up your own mind. Could this possibly fake murder be to cover up the Lama Lisa test? Anyone that will Google the TB test would be inundated with posts and articles about this bizarre case. I've heard a few people point this out, but I would also like to point out that in Chinese culture, the family name would come before the first name. So for example, Elisa Lam, in Chinese culture, the family name would come first, Lam Elisa, just like the TB test. But come on, this is just too crazy to ignore. I first became aware of this case a few years ago because of the link with Hotel Cecil and the murder of Elizabeth Short in 1947, dubbed the Black Dahlia in the press. Elizabeth Short was seen at the bar in Hotel Cecil in the days leading up to her murder. This was a particularly gruesome murder where her death became highly publicised due to the graphic nature of the crime, which included her mutilated, stabbed and beaten corpse bisected at the waist and her body posed and left on display rather publicly. Multiple conspiracy theories exist about this case and with her links to Hollywood, this just fueled those theories. A lot of people have drawn their own conclusions and the case was never officially solved, but we won't go into more detail here, maybe in a later episode. So from the information regarding the notorious Black Dahlia murder led me to the rather gruesome and violent past of Hotel Cecil and ultimately onto the case of Elisa Lam.
I'll just give you a very quick overview of the history of Hotel Cecil. I'll cover the hotel in more detail if I make another episode, as there's lots of information to share here. A lot of people will make money from this supposed death. I say supposed as some people believe this is a hoax, but again, just a quick overview here. Hotel Cecil was constructed in 1924 by William Banks Hanna and targeting business travellers and tourists. Wikipedia states there are 600 guest rooms, but a large poster painted on the side of the building states 700. Uh, however, this poster has probably been there since the beginning of time. The hotel rather quickly gained the reputation for violence and suicide. The first documented suicide in the hotel was in 1931 when W.K. Norton allegedly took poison capsules, ending his own life in his room. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, the suicides continued, and by the 1960s, the hotel was simply known as the suicide by the longer-term guests. The hotel became a notorious spot for adulterous couples, drug activity and prostitution. In 1947, Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, was rumoured to have been seen drinking in the hotel bar in the days leading up to her notorious murder. In 1964, retired telephone operator Pigeon Goldie Osgood was found raped, beaten and murdered in her room and her room was ransacked. Jacques B. Ellinger was charged and later cleared, leaving her murder unsolved to this day. Most infamously, the in the 1980s, the hotel was rumoured to be the resident of serial killer Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. In 1991, another serial killer, Austrian Jack Unterwerger, stayed in the hotel, possibly in homage to Richard Ramirez. So this hotel really isn't somewhere a young girl would want to find herself on her own. Now let's take a look at the hotel CCTV footage as released by the LAPD. I will let it play through, then we'll take a look at the body language. I'm going to cut this clip short here. The clip released by the LAPD was four minutes long. I've cut it short by one minute. It's the last minute. It's just the elevator door opening and closing multiple times, leading people to speculate that the lift was malfunctioning or even paranormal activity was to blame.
There were multiple issues with the LAPD releasing this footage in the first place. Firstly, and the first question we should all be asking ourselves is, why was this footage released by the LAPD? As another YouTube user rightfully pointed out, this isn't usually the kind of footage the police would release in this type of case, not to mention, at this stage she was still just a missing person, one of hundreds, maybe thousands of missing people in the downtown LA area. Why all of the focus on this one case? Another YouTube user analysed the amount of international people missing in the LA area and the numbers are far higher than we are led to believe. So again, why all of the focus on this case when there are thousands of missing people in the downtown LA area? I've also found multiple sources where people have analysed this footage and not only is it suspicious that this footage was ever released to the public in the first place, it's so poor quality, what benefit could there possibly be by releasing this useless footage? but it's also very suspicious that the timestamp is not at all visible. It actually looks as if the footage has been edited to distort the timestamp in some way. As other users are pointing out, this timestamp is there for a reason and it's meant to be clearly visible. Why would the police release footage that has so clearly been edited? Also, multiple sources have pointed out that the footage released by the LAPD has been considerably slowed down and a portion of the footage has been removed. Why would somebody slow down this footage? Would it be to hide the missing part of the footage? Whoever was in the footage doesn't want to be seen and has had the footage shortened to hide the fact that they were there? Is it because Elisa's actions don't seem so erratic and strange at the correct speed? Are the LAPD that incompetent that they knowingly released edited footage? It's rather obvious to a lot of untrained eyes, so why would the LAPD not have experts in this area? Would they really miss glaringly obvious tampered footage? So now we're going to look at the CCTV footage again. The screen on the left is the footage sped up to real time speed. The screen on the right is the footage as released by the LAPD. If you watch the timestamp in the left video closely, you will see the seconds match the time bar for this video exactly. Showing that the LAPD released footage is considerably slowed down. Watch the timestamp closely here. As we approach the one minute mark, you'll notice the minute hand change on the timestamp. As we approach the two minute mark, you can see the hand change again in the timestamp. Now only a few seconds go by and the minute changes in the timestamp again. The timestamp freezes multiple times here and then resumes normally at 12.25.15, losing 54 seconds. So this video alone raises multiple questions. It has been speculated that Elisa may have been taking drugs due to the strange behaviour in the footage, or even suffered a psychotic break. People have also speculated that paranormal activity could have been involved, and that is why the elevator doors wouldn't close. Was Elisa playing the elevator game and transported to another dimension? 
Knowing the footage has been edited and slowed down at the correct speed, does her behaviour still seem so strange? If you notice in the clip, Elisa hit all of the floor buttons in the lift, followed by the door open button. There are videos on YouTube of people testing how long these particular doors in this hotel stay open for when this button is pressed, and it's around two minutes. So now let's take a look at Elisa's body language as she enters the lift. When Elisa initially enters the lift, she is not in fear. Her wide arm swing and relaxed and fluid stride indicate she is relaxed and not feeling urgency. After pushing multiple buttons, she moves to the back left corner of the lift. Her arms are at her side and her feet are positioned neutrally. She is relaxed and this does not indicate fear. Shortly thereafter, she looks quickly out of the lift door. She then retreats to the left wall of the elevator and then moves to the left front corner. Her hands adopt the fig leaf configuration and her feet are close together. This is consistent with anxiety, a lower confidence, beta emotional tone. This body language does not, by itself, indicate fear. Notice she also appears to be smiling here. Here she jumps out of the elevator. It's a quick two-step manoeuvre and has a playful quality to it. For a second or two, Elisa's feet splay wide. While her hands are still in the fig leaf, non-verbal or close to it, this wide stance signifies greater confidence and is not consistent with fear. Thus, the simultaneity of these two non-verbal signals convey a level of emotional dissonance. This is the most important part of the clip. For about 12 seconds, Elisa displays an elbows out laterally with armpit exposed and a behind the head hair preening display. This was, at least for some time, performed bilaterally. The movement as she reaches up to begin the extended preen was fluid, slow and deliberate, which is very important. This display cluster context is a strong and highly reliable indicator of sexual interest. The person of her interest is either present outside the lift or she is actively thinking about this person. Here we can see both hands and arms retracting from her extended preening sexual display as she turns to go back into the lift. She steadies herself as she walks back into the lift. This coupled with her slow stride suggests either lightheaded symptoms, vertigo or a relative emotional extreme. This elbow forward bilateral hair just behind the ears is a non-verbal sign of Elisa dialing up her alpha. This map, manipulator, adapter, pacifier, indicates she is trying to be more assertive or courageous. This is in distinction to the sexual display noted previously. Notice her elbows are not pointed out laterally but held closer to her body. An example of a map, several indicators are known as manipulators, adapters or pacifiers. These are unknown signals displayed by someone to show anxiety or stress. Touching a body part focused mainly above the shoulder line is a classic sign of a map. Although the resolution is low, we can see that Elisa is smiling. Although it may not be a true, sincere smile, it is at least a fair social smile. Her right hand gestures in an illustrator with a fingertip only touching of her right chest. This hand illustrator suggests a low sincerity and or a higher level of anxiety in this moment. A series of fairly dramatic non-verbal illustrators and maps take place. This may be part of the body language of a conversation taking place with somebody is out of our view, or it may be a sort of rehearsal for an anticipated upcoming conversation or interaction, or as many have speculated, is possibly due to drugs. Although our view and resolution is limited, this does not have the non-verbal signature of fear. This map almost looks as if she's playing a game of charades.
Here, Alyssa's right foot goes up onto her toes. She does this several times. This body language pattern indicates a significant level of excitement and optimism. It is also common with joy. At the very end of this video, Alyssa's elbow briefly elevates up and out laterally again in a shorter repeat of the sexual interest preening non-verbal discussed previously. The conclusion that multiple body language experts came to was that Elisa is playing a game of hide and seek or something similar in this video and although at times she displays some anxiety, there is no indication of fear. There is definitely an element of play present here. It is of course also possible that drugs are influencing her behaviour. Of particular importance is she is putting herself on sexual display. Could she have been spiked with the date rape drug? While what is seen here may have no connection to her demise, if the events in this video occurred just before her disappearance, it strongly suggests that the person to whom she is attracted may have knowledge of, contributed to, or be responsible for her death. Are you confused? So am I. So the whole reason for releasing this video was to show everyone how strange Elisa was acting before her disappearance. But we can see from the analysis of her body language and once it has been sped up to the proper speed that she is in fact not acting as strange as the police and media have tried to make you believe. Again, do we really believe that the LAPD didn't analyse the footage before they released it? So to summarise, the questions I have from the information we've just discussed. Why is the TB test called LAM Elisa? What's the connection? Why was this footage released by the LAPD? Why all of the focus on this one case? Why would the police release footage that has so clearly been edited? Why has the timestamp been tampered with? Why would somebody slow down this footage? What was on the missing 54 seconds of the footage that was removed? Could Elisa have been spiked with the date rape drug? If you're still watching, I thank you very much for listening. I would very much appreciate comments and feedback on any of the content in this video and any information you have, please feel free to leave in the comments below. I've gathered so much information on this case that I hope to follow up with a couple more episodes. Depends how much this video is liked. If you enjoyed this video and want to be notified of the next episode in this series, please do like and subscribe to the channel. I don't have any social media whatsoever, so I'll not be sharing this video. As a result, we'll probably get absolutely no views, but if you do find my video and enjoy it, please like and subscribe.